to Coach Gabriel before the match, and she talked about some of the injuries that they've been dealing with, this Washington Husky team. And, you know, she's on one hand obviously upset and disappointed and working to get their team healthy. On the other hand, she sees the bright side of it in that she, they're constantly trying to improve, and they're really working on the depth of this team and making sure that not only does it benefit them this year, but it benefits them in future years as well. Well, these are two teams with a lot of depth, and so that gives them both that benefit for sure. On the Gophers side, Gophers, when we, we talked about this beforehand, you know I'm somebody who loves to really get into the stats. Gophers are all time 22 and 10 against schools where their head coach previously uh, had coached. And 20 of those wins came Coach Hebert against Illinois. And so this is the 33rd all-time meeting of a Gopher head coach against the team he previously had coached at. Absolutely, and Coach Leslie Gabriel at Washington has been there a long time, so she was there even prior to Coach Keegan Cook. And it'll be interesting to see how Keegan Cook, you know, what impact he left on Washington and how that shows up, but also the impact that he's already having here in his tenure at Minnesota. Well, we are just about to get underway here and just getting off lineups. And we will be back in one minute here. And we'll get ready here for these two teams to square off. Minnesota happy to be back at home. The Maturi Pavilion quite packed. Um, Washington, we'll see how they do here. Well, we're back here at Maturi Pavilion, just about to get underway as we take a look at tonight's starting lineups. What are you expecting to see out of the Gophers? You know, Minnesota has sort of solidified this starting lineup here with Walker out on the outside along with Julia Hansen. Lydia Grote will be fun to watch tonight as she plays her sister's former team, but they're really grooved into this starting lineup and, and really starting, you can tell they're starting to find their way and, and really have a nice rhythm with one another. Well, on the other hand, Washington starting Julia Hunt, Imani Bush, Molly Wilson, Katie Wessels, June Fletcher, Sophia Tolino, and Lauren Bays. Again, they're still rebounding from not having Kirsten Barton. So we'll see how they rebuild around that. Absolutely, and Washington running that 6-2 offense. So we'll see both setters. We'll see three hitters at all times. It gives them a lot of options. Well, right off the bat, McKenna Wooker sends that one back. And Imani Bush. We'll send that one wide. So Gophers getting that first point and looking to go on a bit of a streak at the beginning here. I mean, that was a good swing there by Bush. She's going to go deep corners. Minnesota has a very big block. They're a great blocking team. And so we're going to see how Washington kind of adjusts so that we expect them to hit high hands. We expect them to look for the open shots. Well, Shaftmaster back at the line. Tough serve, but it was received. Bush goes to the side of the block, picked up by Palabiak. They'll go to Wooker. And off that top of the block. Bush again tries to roll it over, but Shaftmaster's there. Grote now, but picked up by Washington. Bush again, tight ball. Grote got a hand on it. And this time going back, they'll find Fletcher. Gophers return. Wooker and finds the donut. Really smart shot by McKenna Wooker. It was a little bit of an out of rhythm set for Mel Melanie Shaftmaster and McKenna Wooker, but McKenna Wooker has got great court awareness here and she sees wide open space there in the middle of the court. It's a smart tip by McKenna Wooker. Serve from Shaftmaster, still putting pressure, gets the overpass. She'll set Groat. And another hot swing from Groat, but Again, Washington able to get it back. Wooker, and a huge block from Kuhn Fletcher. 
Kuhn Fletcher, my goodness, what a big block and a really important one for her team. Washington, we mentioned this is a new venue for them and they're gonna need to settle in a little bit and get comfortable and that is a really nice way to do it is to build momentum on a huge block by Kuhn Fletcher. Well, that'll send the libero Lauren Bays to the line. Serve picked up by Hanson, straight to Awalea, off the hands, Awalea with the kill. Phoebe Awalea has really turned into a key factor for this Minnesota team. Honestly, most of her role has been in defense. She's been really strong blocking and was actually named the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week just a few weeks back for her blocking. She's not as much of an offensive contributor, but it's good that Minnesota's getting her involved early. Well, a big kill on the outside. That was Bush once again. Imani Bush taking big swings out there, and I love to see that from her. You have to go aggressive. You have to start aggressive and swing hard, especially when you've got a nice cross-court opening like that. Zoria Hurd on the serve, gets the ace off Palabia. As Sam, you and I, as we were kind of talking and prepping for this match, we were talking a lot about serving because Keegan Cook is one of the best serving trainers in the nation, and he's certainly starting to bring that here to Minnesota. And we, we were expecting to see some really strong serving out of the Washington squad, especially those athletes that he just coached just a couple of years ago. And Awalea getting on the board again with the offense. I know, second kill for Phoebe Awalea. Maybe she's trying to say, don't tell me I don't, I don't do any offense. She just, she's doing really, really well. And you can tell Minnesota this is part of their game plan is to get those middles established. Palaviak back to the line. Gophers lead 4-3. And out of system, Bush will just push that one to the backcourt. Shaftmaster to Grote. And there we go, gets her first kill. Some great swings early, but finally gets on the board herself. And Lydia Grote is really consistent and really reliable for this Gophers offense. There you can see her as, as she's keyed up. It's a great set by Melanie Schaffmaster with a diving middle blocker. She's able to take that cross court shot. Deep serve from Kolobiak. They'll go to Bush again. And two strong hands, but can't quite tame that one. It's a really wonderful swing by Imani Bush. I'm really impressed with her ability to swing high hands there. It is not an ideal position for her to be in. It's kind of a off the net set, she's a little bit out of system. And the best way to score there is to go high hands and really rip at it. Well, Gophers leading 5-4. Grote takes another swing and gets another kill. And Lydia Grote doing her own high hand swing there, taking advantage of the Washington block, kind of flying in her face. We'll get a look at this replay here. And you can see they're shaded right, ready for the ball to go to her. It's actually a pretty well-formed block. But again, when you're swinging high hands, you have a really good chance of scoring. Well, that'll send Grote back to the line. Serve picked up cleanly and sliding back, Julia Hunt. Julia Hunt, the freshman out of Covington, Kentucky, right out of the Cincinnati area, there with a really fast slide. Washington, you know, sometimes they'll run their middle ball a little bit higher, but that slide was a really quick pace. That's hard to block. And like with Phoebe Awalea, a defensive leader, but coming out strong with the offense. 6 5 Gophers lead. And that one handled by Wooker and Palaviak running into that front row of the stands. And so that'll go down as an ace. Really good hustle there. Washington really smart in their serving selection here. They're going after McKenna Wooker in the left back. You know, Minnesota's passing has kind of been up and down all year. So right there, that last uh, serve hunt right after Wooker. We'll see if she goes there again. And Palavik steps in front. They'll go to Hansen. And that finds the court. Julia Hansen getting on the board. We're expecting a lot out of her tonight. Julia Hansen just having a really breakout year. And you can't say enough about just how athletic she is. When you look, the hang time she's got, she's hitting clear over that block. It's just, there's no defending that. A serve into the net. That'll tie this thing up 7-7. So far, a really competitive match. Both teams playing nice defense. Really, I'm loving the offensive swings that we're seeing out of both sides of this, of this match. It's Molly Wilson, the fourth year junior setter for Washington serving. Picked up by Palabiak. And they'll go back to Kalissa Minity. That one 
sent long. I still think it's a good set choice by Melanie Shaftmaster. She's trying to force the issue with the middles, and by doing that, she opens up her pins. You could tell there, Kalissa Minity was just not in rhythm. It got a little bit wonky, and unfortunately, an error from Minity. And trickling off the net, Wooker saved it with the help of Minity, and they get it back over. Free ball, Washington. And that swing from Ensley. She'll get another. Shaftmaster Minity with the hands, but it was Thebalt that got it. And Wooker puts it down, slips it right in front of the Husky defense. That is a point that is all hustle out of this Minnesota Gopher squad. Washington's defense hanging in there too, but Minnesota kept alive by the initial pass by McKenna Wooker, and then the entire team really doing a very strong job defensively. Well, several scrappy plays already for the Gophers, tied 8-8 as Elise McGee comes in, nearly gets the ace, and instead, Wooker gets the block. Oh my goodness, that was straight down. What a block by Wooker. Ensley really tried to take a rip at it, but Wooker penetrated over the net. Take a look, this is gonna be a great shot at the net cam. Look at that, straight down. Really good block by McKenna Wooker. 9-8 Gophers. And Shaftmaster, off her hand and out. That was Kuhn Fletcher on the kill. A good swing there by Kuhn Fletcher. Kuhn Fletcher normally plays on the right side and that rotation she's gonna hit outside and really a smart swing to try and use the hands of Melanie Shaftmaster. Ensley to serve. She's been the number one option this year with the departure of Kirsten Barton. Sam, you got in on the action there. <laughs> I didn't know if we were going to have a player in our laps yeah, or if no, you were going to get that ball out of there or what was going to happen. Good point for Washington. At that point, just got to protect my notes. <laughs> Serve picked up by Thebolt, straight to Wooker. And off the block, huge block. It was Katie Wessels who got that one. Great block by Katie Wessels. And it, as I, you kind of watch McKenna Wooker, it looked like she was hanging in there, wasn't really sure what she wanted to do with that ball. Wessels, a really good job of keeping that left hand in position to block that ball. And Hansen soaring in from the back row, it's picked up. And that set just a little too far out front, Shaftmaster takes care of it. Absolutely. Minnesota should be pumped about this point because, my goodness, what a heck of a dig by Molly Wilson. And Washington's probably going to be disappointed they couldn't convert that into a point, but Minnesota's off front line is, is really strong. We'll cut that deficit down to one point, 11-10 Washington. And Shaftmaster at the line and gets the ace. Looked like an ace, somehow getting a hand on it but fell for the ace anyway. Yeah, I mean, again, really great hustle out of both teams. It's a great serve by Melanie Shaftmaster. Gotta love it when it breaks your way. I think that's three already that have trickled off the net. Yeah. And Shaftmaster again. To the opposite, and from Fletcher, that's, it'll go back to Wooker off hands. And a heads up play by Awalea, but just wide. Yeah, just a little bit wide there by Phoebe Awalea. It's a smart play, but you know, sometimes you're just, it, it, you don't have enough space on the court. Bays the senior libero, back to serve. Of course, a player recruited by Keegan Cook, one of many on this roster. Shaftmaster will go straight to Grote on the outside, off high hands. And Wooker gets hands on that swing from Bush. Bush tries the tip, and Grote can't quite get to that one. I mean, good job by Bush staying in it, using different shots. I mean, this is part of the job of the outside hitter, is you're gonna take a ton of swings, you gotta clean up the garbage, but you also have to mix it up. You have to go hard, you have to go high hands, you have to do off speed. Really nice job by Bush. Hansen picked it up, Palabiak now Grote. And a good job by the defense getting that one back. Bush takes a swing and it's wide. 
Very smart job by Zeynep Palabiak there. You can see the Minnesota Libero is right in position, and so she knows if that ball is too far left or too high, that ball is going out of bounds. Really important. Minnesota not passing all that well early on in this set, but still very tight with Washington down 12 to 13. Well, Alex Acevedo into serve. As we were talking about before the game, one of the best servers on the team with some advanced metrics that, that we were playing around with beforehand as Lydia Groat puts that one down hard. Lydia Groat with her third kill of the night already. We talked about Lydia Groat playing her sister's former team. Marin Groat was a star for the Washington Huskies, and um, it sounds like she's still quite connected to the program, and so they're able to keep tabs on how Lydia's doing and obviously having a great season. Overpass, Aulea takes care of it. And that is all the serve of Alex Acevedo. Obviously, Aulea has got to be there to, to take care of it. But Alex Acevedo, we talked, you mentioned this, Sam, um, in terms of point scoring, is the best server on this Gophers roster. She's point scoring at 60-something percent of the time. It's really incredible. And also, Acevedo, the only Gopher to have more service aces than errors this year. That's right. Wilker will come back in for Acevedo. And Zoria Hurd will go to the line for Washington, tied up here at 14. Picked up by Palaviak, Shaftmaster straight to Hansen and gets that one off the block. That is a perfect set by Shaftmaster. She was able to push it out far enough that Julia Hansen had this wide open line. We take a look at this. That is a wide open line for Julia Hansen to hit down. That's exactly what the Gopher offense is looking for. Gophers lead 15-14, we'll step aside. Minnesota's passing up and down a little bit, but their defense really holding it, them in this match. And from an offensive standpoint, they're killing at a pretty pretty strong rate. Blaviak had the serve. And messily handled by the Huskies. Blaviak will come away with it. 16-14 Gophers. And important here for Minnesota to try and widen the gap. At the same time, Washington cannot let them get too far apart. They're doing a really nice job of keeping them tight and putting the pressure on Minnesota. Blaviak, another tough serve. All the way out to Bush. Takes a big swing, but enough of the block to slow it down. Grote, off hands. Scramble to get it back, but they'll do so. Just rolling that one over. Shaftmaster setting Hansen. And as Keegan Cook says, flying high, hitting hard. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just really fun to watch Julia Hansen as she kind of glides through the air. You can see here, this is the second time now Molly Wilson has not had a block well formed in front of Hansen, and Hansen has been able to take advantage. Washington needs Wilson to really get up there. There you see Gophers hitting 304 compared to .097. As a back row swing will be sent long. That puts the Gophers up. Up four, 18-14, and it'll force a timeout. So yeah, Coach Leslie Gabriel is not going to want to let Minnesota get too far out in front here, and she's going to talk to her team a little bit about what she's seeing. Minnesota putting the service pressure on for sure. So you've been in this huddle a lot of the times. So what, what's it, what exactly is going on? What are they saying right now? I mean, it, it, it's really not all that magical or different than what you'd expect. If you're if you're Coach Keegan Cook and the Minnesota defense, you're really focusing on, A, who are you going to put the pressure on from the service line, but then also what, what do you expect them to run coming out of this timeout? Where do you want your blockers, and how do you want them to keep focusing on keeping the pressure on? If you're Washington, you're just talking about, listen, we've just got to make a pass and get a side out here, and then we can kind of roll from there. And so it's a little bit about, like, listen, here's what I want to see you do from a passing perspective. And then you're really talking to your setter about, hey, here's where the play I think we want to run or who we want might want to feed the ball to. But it's really about just getting that confidence back to, to nail the pass here. Well, so far for the Gophers, Gophers, Aulea has really stood out. And we've talked about her defense a little bit. I mean, she is on pace to be fourth all-time single season in blocks per set. But she's having a great game offensively as well, too. Absolutely. And, you know, it feels like she sort of had this 
unlock in the middle of this season as it relates to blocking. And they've been really working hard on her eyes and where her hands are positioned. And she's obviously be finding great success. And one thing I actually didn't learn until earlier today is that she didn't decide until the spring if she was going to stay. She walked last senior night and just practiced with the team, wasn't sure what she was going to do, and decided she wasn't ready to hang up the towel. And Gopher fans are very happy about that. With Absolutely. Her performance. And, I, and I bet Phoebe is too, right? Well, Palabiak back serving. Gophers lead 18-14 on Big Ten Plus, and Bush finds the donut. We talked about Imani Bush doing a, a, a fabulous work here of mixing up her shots. She's got great court awareness. Six foot three junior out of uh, Campbell River, Canada. Well, she missed last year with a shoulder injury. Hasn't been gone to the most on this team, but she's getting a lot of good looks tonight and, and performing quite well as that serve Barely returned by Wooker and Grote puts that one just, just long. It's a really good pass by McKenna Wooker. And Grote upset with herself here that she's not able to put this ball away because it's a great set by Melanie Schaffmaster. Bush serving. Gopher still a two point lead. They'll go to Hanson, gets up there, but it's received on the other side. That's Ensley picked up by Wooker. Hansen again. And that one caught hands. We'll go quick to Minity. And the Husky defense can't quite tame it. I love that set choice by Melanie Shaftmaster. It's a very quick set pushed into the gap here for Calissa Minity. Calissa Minity's number one job is just get up and be an option. And Melanie Shaftmaster able to take advantage there. Well, of the two, she's been the offensive middle of this mm -hmm season, but it's great to see that they're both getting involved offensively early in this one. Grote sends that serve long. I think, you know, Grote, uh, and earlier this season, I was talking to Coach Cook before a match, and he said, you know, she's so consistent, and sometimes she just tries so hard to be so great, and sometimes you just talk to her about, just relax, rely on what you've got. You, you, you know, she's such a strong player. Husky serve picked up by Palaviak, overpass. And no time wasted as Wessels puts that away. Really, really great for Washington to be pushing themselves back into it. Now they're only down one, 18-19, and a, a fantastic uh, work by Julia Hunt the first year. And this is where you maybe start to see that Midwest Big Ten crowd coming into play, starting to get loud. Shaftmaster goes to Hansen, off the block, and no Gophers back there to get it. It's interesting, that's a coverable ball. Minnesota's gotta be really disappointed in that. They, you know, Washington, kudos to them. They are doing just a fantastic work of trying to head coaching position as Keegan Cook came here to Minnesota, and, but decades of experience with this Husky program. Well, the Gophers take that one as it's sent just long. And Just here, wide, excuse me. And here, Minnesota is going to want to push the issue and force the issue. Washington has got to be focused on just nail a pass. They've got a two-hitter rotation up here right now. Wilson's going to be looking to feed her hot hand. Well, Hansen sends it into the net again, tied up at 20. Molly Wilson at the line. Leads the team entering the night with 24 service aces. It's picked up by Wooker. And back on the slide, but it's picked up. And Ensley puts that away. That's the swing you're looking for for Ensley. She hasn't quite been able to find it in terms of kills, but that is the swing that you're looking for. But it starts with really great defense, again, from Molly Wilson. She's a dinging machine back there. Well, Wilson serves again. And tough one picked up by Palaviak. Wooker off hands. Hansen gets there. Palaviak, she'll set Wooker again. And just rolls that one into the net. That's a hard ball to swing at when it's coming come from nearly behind you and high over your head. And so you can understand why Wooker wasn't able to take advantage of that, but you want her to be able to do that. You want her to at least put it back in play. Washington, on the other hand, forcing the issue from the service line, and that is doing a, 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 all that they needed to do right now. Well, as you said, we talked a lot about serving and certainly a Washington team that even though they've rebuilt in many ways, 
very influenced by Keegan Cook still. Absolutely, and, and even Coach Jim McLaughlin before him, and you know Leslie Gabriel was a player there, so you can see that it, it, Keegan Cook has you know certainly made his impact there, and now here in Minnesota in his second season has brought some of those things that he is known for, and now in season two you can you can sort of see the development of that. You know, season one is all about just kind of getting comfortable and understanding what the rhythm of the, of road life is and what the rhythm of the Big Ten is. Now he's really starting to build his own program and his own culture. And, and you can you can see it's showing up in how these Gophers are playing. And we were talking with Lydia Grote yesterday, and she said that you can really, you know, there are certainly some similarities between his systems at Washington and here, but it's really a fully different scheme just mm -hmm. because a new set of players building the team around different uh, talents and so really recreating his team's identity. Absolutely and I think you know that is job one as a coach is to sort of figure out what you've got in terms of talent in terms of skill and in terms of the mix of players and the dynamics among them and you've got to work that at the same time as you're also pushing you know what you know to be effective so both of these coaches obviously very successful. Let's her picked up by Flaviak and Shaftmaster goes over herself to get the Gophers out of that 3-0 scoring run for the Huskies. Really smart play by Melanie Shaftmaster. Nobody in the gym expecting it. Really a well placed ball. Elise McGee. And she'll send it long. Meredith, back to that play with Shaftmaster. Is that something you think was drawn up during the timeout or just saw the opportunity and had to take it? Yeah, I mean, I think Shaftmaster sort of has the green light. So when she feels where the block is or when she feels like in its appropriate time, she's going to take it. It's probably not a play drawn up. Um, but for sure, she's. we know her to be quite offensive. Service ace for Ensley. And it's set point for the Huskies. And Washington just doing it all from the service line. Obviously, their defense is incredible, too. It's keeping them in it. And Minnesota, just the fundamentals are failing them right now. Another tough serve. They'll send Hanson back row, off hands, and just falls between a group of gophers up front. I just mentioned it, Sam. I, I think really here coming down in the stretch, you can't have your pass and serve game fail you like that for Minnesota. Minnesota's passing broke a point, but certainly both teams credit to their defense. Well, at the very end there, Julia Hansen getting on a little bit more of a roll, but at the very beginning at least, maybe players not quite excelling in the ways that you expected to them, but contributing in other ways, like, like with Awale on the offensive side. Yeah, absolutely. Phoebe Awale had three kills on four swings. She's hitting 500 for the night. If Minnesota can get more production out of her, they're going to like what they've got for the night. As it stands, Bays serving to start off set two. And they'll go to Hansen, and she'll softly set that one over to the middle. And Hunt just drops that in. Hansen picked up. They'll go back to Bush and gets the hands. Bush, another kill. Imani Bush with her sixth kill of the night, and she's doing a, a fabulous job of swinging high hands. Again, here's another one right off the hands. And it's just so hard to defend that. With a loopy serve, we'll go back to Groat. And it's picked up cleanly. Bush again. And denied by the gopher block. And there, Bush not able to get her feet in position. She was stuck inside of the court. And you could see she could not get a full approach. And there, you can't use the hands. And so Minnesota was block able to, able to take care of it. Blaviak serving. Picked up, they'll go back cross court to Bush. And go for setting Grote again. That swing from Fletcher picked up. And the Gophers go back to Grote. Sharp cross court, it's picked up. Gophers another chance. Up the middle, Minity. And putting it away, it's Kuhn Fletcher. 
Kuhn Fletcher gets the credit for the kill, but that point goes to Washington's defense through and through. They have dug everything that Minnesota has put at them in the first three points of the second set. Minnesota is going to need to keep swinging away, but it's clear that Washington's defense is going to continue to be tough for them to manage. Heard at the service line. Hansen and gets way up on that one. Ties and, this thing up 2-2. And there you see Julia Hansen doing what Julia Hansen does, which is, again, swing high, swing hard, and right over that block of Washington. Little Sun Grote back to the service line. Good serve, overpass, and Hansen can't quite put it away. Good hustle by the Huskies. Gophers with a chance here. Back to Hansen, and she hammers it home. Hansen, another kill. Really important for Minnesota to win that point. When, you, when another team hustles like that, Hurd did a fabulous job running after that ball for Washington. When another team is hustling like that, you really want to win that point such that you don't let them gain momentum from that hustle. There you see Grote's stats. Been a huge force for the Gophers this season as Bush gets the tip and adds another to her tally. What an outstanding performance for Bush. Absolutely. And, you know, I think Zaina Plavik is probably very disappointed in herself that she didn't pick up that tip. It was an easy to read tip. She just could not get in position. But again, Amani Bush getting it done for this Washington Huskies team. Bush back at the service line, 3-3. Three, three. And Wooker picks it up, running the slide to Minotee. And they'll reset as that's turned away. Hansen off the block. It'll be Palabi extending Hansen again. And a block from Julia Hunt. Julia Hunt, we've called her name a few times tonight, Sam. What a, a, a difference maker in her first year here at Washington. She's done a nice job blocking, but she was putting the pressure on from the service line, swinging well. Well, she leads Big Ten freshmen with 100 entering the night, now 101 blocks. Mm -hmm. And leads the team in every blocking category. Gophers will send it straight out to Hansen. And just long, no, they're saying it got a touch. Yeah, the down ref here, the R2 called the touch, and that's the right call. You could see it just to hit uh, Washington's hands. There's no argument there from Washington and Julia Hansen. Able to notch that kill. Hansen up to seven on the night. And she'll serve. And again, sending it long. Julia Hansen just cannot figure it out from the service line tonight. That's her uh, third service error. And she's obviously frustrated, disappointed in herself. Important now, though, she comes back with a pass and is an option in the back row for, for Minnesota. Well, Washington won, has won nine points on their aces and Minnesota's errors. Minnesota just the one ace as Wooker takes a swing and knocks us back up in the second set. And McKenna Wooker been a little bit quiet early on in the night and important that Minnesota gets her involved, gets her in the action. They're switching things up here a little bit from a lineup standpoint. You saw Kelly Ingeman in and now Lauren Crow Crowell in to serve for Minnesota. Crowell had 12, 12 kills in six sets in the USC-UCLA weekend. Getting a chance here as the tip from Wooker falls. And you can't give Kate Thiebault that kill because she didn't kill the ball. However, she kept this ball alive. Look at that hustle. And McKenna Wooker then, that's a nice rip off speed. Crowell serving with the one point lead. Big swing by Ensley. And it'll be Awalea running that slide again. Ensley again. And gets that net touch. And Ensley there, she's happy with that kill, especially she tripped over the foot of another player and was, wasn't really in rhythm, but still able to you know, hammer it hard, hard off that block. Molly Wilson back serving. 5.8 assists per set there, as you see. And Hansen back row tip. It's picked up. They'll go to Ensley again. Turned away by Awalea. Now on the far side. 
And off the hands of Wooker, it's Kuhn Fletcher. And Kuhn Fletcher has, we called her name a few times tonight. She's been a, a, a really important factor for this Washington offense on the right side. They're not feeding a ton of balls to her, but they're giving to them to her in the optimal situations. Well, she's got three kills, no errors on seven attempts and tacked on three blocks already. As Shaftmaster goes over, and the Huskies can't handle it. Yeah, and you know, it'll be interesting. That's the second dump here for Melanie Shaftmaster that's been pretty effective. So we'll see if she gets a little bit more aggressive and continues to dump the ball a little bit more. Obviously that requires Minnesota's passing to give her a shot. The Minnesota Volley squad quickly wiping up the court as a couple Huskies hit the ground on that last play and we'll get back into action in a second here. Shaftmaster getting ready to serve. Go for seven and one at home this year. Absolutely, and Maturi Pavilion is a special place to play. This is a very knowledgeable volleyball crowd. They draw great crowds here, many sold out matches. So no, no doubt that they have a home court advantage. They've got to take advantage of it tonight. And so they'll just have to bump that over. After a little miscommunication, the Gophers get it and great defense on Wooker's swing, but she still gets the kill. I love this Washington Husky defense. Obviously, they didn't get that, that uh, point and McKenna Wooker had a nice swing. I thought it was a great swing and yet that ball almost comes back over. So credit to this Washington Husky defense. Gophers in front, 8-7. Trail 1-0 in sets, Shaftmaster. Serve is picked up to the middle. And putting it away is Katie Wessels. And we haven't called Wessels' name all that much yet, but um, she is a, a middle, uh, only in her second year out of Lewiston, Ohio, Idaho, excuse me. And she obviously a very important part of this Husky team if they can get her involved in offense a little bit more. Well, both times she's gotten the ball, she's put it away. Ensley's serve almost gets the overpass. Instead, it's Grote taking a big swing. It'll go to Bush again, strong double block, turned away. She'll get another chance. Overpass, Wooker and Aulea handle it. Shaftmaster goes far to Grote. And tools the block, Lydia Grote gets on the board again. Lydia Grote, you, she's an opposite hitter in this rotation. Obviously she's, she's hitting outside. And you'll notice on the outside, she goes high hands quite a bit. And that is very effective for her as she's swinging, where she's, you know, only swings there one rotation. Acevedo, back serving. Good return as flying in. Did she get hands? No. That was Kuhn Fletcher, where to go for point. It was really good rhythm, Kuhn Fletcher. It was great rhythm. We're gonna see a challenge here as Washington believes there was a touch on this ball. Well, so far, Bush really heavily leading the charge for Washington. She's got seven kills and a block, three digs. Fletcher's had a great night too. Stands at 10-8. But that certainly gives Washington a bit of time to game plan. Yep, and you can see here, Leslie Gabriel having a chat with the R2, Britt Myers, and he's saying, I couldn't see anything. There was nothing to see to overturn that call. And so play will stand with Minnesota. Again, both teams able to use that as a timeout. Now to, now to come back. Acevedo able to keep up the service pressure. Didn't respond to being iced and gets the ace. If you're Minnesota, that is exactly what you want to see in this situation. You want Acevedo to put the pressure on, keep the ball in play, and you want to go on a bit of a run here. Recall that it kept it tight most of the first set and then ended up losing. Another tough serve picked up. Gophers will go to Hansen, tries to drop it in with finesse, but Bush is there. And a big swing that rattles off the net and out from Fletcher. And they're really pushing Kuhn Fletcher a lot in this rotation. And she's had a couple of good swings and then a couple sort of out of rhythm swings. And it hasn't been effective for them. You will wonder if, if Molly Wilson keeps pushing Fletcher in this rotation or if she heads back out to the hot hand of Bush. Well, Bush and Fletcher combining for 31 of the attack attempts for Washington as Bush gets the kill on that one. And Bush, obviously, team relying on her in a very big way. You want to see them continue to push the ball to her. You don't want to see them get one note, but she's really effective. 
Going back to what you said in the pregame, another player that they get to see a lot more of with the injury to Barton. Grote, a huge swing, but picked up. And Bush just goes off the block. And the gopher block turns it away. Lydia Grote and Phoebe Awalea. And that is what we're used to seeing a little bit more of as we've watched Minnesota throughout this season. This combination of Grote and Awalea putting up a really big block. And Bush, just nothing she can do with that ball. Well, Grote, 56 block assists, three solo blocks on top of you know, one of the best blockers in all of college volleyball right now, and a big kill from Julia Hunt to try and stop that go for momentum. And there you go, Julia Hunt. Again, we talked about it. She, every ball she's gotten thus far, she's been able to terminate. So we'll see if she pushes a little bit more. Sorry, she's two for three. I'd still call that good. <laughs> well, two for three and no errors. Mm -hmm. So Wooker picks up that serve. Shaftmaster, Hansen, and a big swing from Hansen. And there, the difference is that Lydia Grote and Callie Engeman, so Lydia Grote playing on the right, Callie Engeman playing in the middle, able to hold their blockers, which gives Julia Hansen a little bit of a seam here. You can see that that middle blocker from Washington, Julia Hunt, got stuck in the middle, and Hansen able to take advantage. Grote the serve, picked up, but out. Another ace for Lydia Grote. Absolutely, and we'll see a timeout here, but important for Lydia Grote to get hot from that service line, and now they've widened the lead by five points. Well, Gophers up 15-10. We'll be back with more after this. Minnesota has been able to turn their offensive production around. Washington, on the other hand, still can't quite get over the hump. Well, certainly one issue for Washington is Minnesota likely game planning really heavily against uh, against uh, Julia Hunt as well as against Maddie Ensley. And, and Imani Bush has really bit, at least surprised me in how great a performance she's had. Leads the team with eight kills, tied for leading the game, tied with Julia Hansen. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you like to see that in a player that that is going to come and kind of make a difference when they when you have a key injury everyone else has to step up everyone else has to come into it and fill that role and fill that production and Amani Bush during certainly trying her hardest to do just that well the Gophers with a good lead here middle of the second set had trouble in the first one but maybe that was a little bit of a wake-up call the Gophers done quite well under Keegan Cook, just three losses to unranked teams in his time here in his two years at Minnesota. Absolutely, and you know, as, if you're Washington, you're looking at Maddie Ensley, and you want a little bit more production out of her. She's leading the team in kills, but thus far has had a bit of trouble finding her rhythm. Well, they'll go to Hunt. What a great dig by Feebolt. And they'll just have to free that, free ball that one over. Hunt again, and gets it off Wooker and the antenna. It's a really impressive performance by a, a true freshman. Hunt doesn't show any fear out there. She's swinging really hard, going really hard after these blocks. I mean, I'm, I'm quite impressed. Well, Julia Hunt, that's her third. Again, making the most of a mark on defense. And the ace just falls. The Gophers thought it was out, and they'll have to regroup. Washington clawing back at this one. Julia Hunt, we talked about it. Blocking presence, she's an offensive threat, putting the pressure on from the service line. That was her 12th of the year. And she'll go again and get her 13th. Wooker had trouble handling that one. Absolutely, and it'll be interesting to see how long Coach Keegan Cook lets this go. Minnesota cannot let Washington back in this set. They're now up four. They've got to handle this serve. Well picked up, and it'll go to Wooker. On the other side, Ensley off the hand of Shaftmaster. Goes over, Wooker tries to push it over. And they'll go up the middle. And they won't get hands, so the Gophers breaking a 3-0 scoring run for the Huskies. 
It'll be interesting here. It looks like Coach Leslie Gabriel is going to use her challenge. This is her second challenge. And remember, she lost the first challenge. So if you lose that challenge, you don't get to keep it. Now she's going to use her second. She's got to win this in order to keep her challenges unless they go to five sets. Well, certainly the Gophers hoping to get out of this in for both teams. It's a bit of a test coming up ahead. Washington, a huge weekend. They go to Nebraska on Saturday as we'll get a look at that last play. Hard to tell in full speed there. It's a little bit like we need a slower look, but obviously the referees trying to get multiple angles and multiple looks. You mentioned it though, Sam. Washington at Nebraska, uh, a potentially very big match for them. Uh, I don't I don't see anything there, but again, it's, it's hard to tell. Washington seemed very convinced. And certainly part of it just showing that stand up for your players as a coach to, to make that challenge because they seemed pretty convinced that it did get the touch. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Minnesota heads to Oregon or Here. hosts yeah. Oregon, number 12 Oregon on Big Ten Network this Saturday. That'll be a homecoming for Alex Acevedo and Kate Thebalt, they were there together at Oregon. You know, we, we talked to Coach Leslie Gabriel before the match about, you know, how's it going in the Big Ten? Like, you know, it's obviously quite different. She said, we love it. it you know, you're so, everything's so new and you're trying to figure everything out. You know, you've not been in these gyms before. She said, you know, we went to Michigan and a lot of our players had never even been to Michigan. And so, you know, they're, they're really figuring it out, but she loves playing, you know, in these really crowded gyms, really strong volleyball atmospheres. And she said it's been really great for them. But, you know, it, it is different, and hosting Nebraska is going to be different, and it'll be a test. And, and yesterday, talking with Keegan Cook, as we get one more look here, still doesn't look like enough to overturn it to me. Oh my gosh, it's hard to tell. And again, trying, uh, R2 trying to take his time. We'll see. It looks like we've got a ruling here. Well, and there was indeed a touch. There is a touch. And, and so back to 18-15 for the Gophers. To finish the thought, Keegan Cook sort of debunking the idea of West Coast volleyball and saying <laughs> it's just a good high-level area of volleyball. A lot of physical teams, Washington more physical defensively, Oregon more offensively, and great to have them in the conference to mm -hmm. add that level of competition. Mm -hmm. Hunt serving, three-point deficit after the challenge. And she'll pick up another ace. Great service run from Julia Hunt. And Washington really keying in on Zainet Palabiak. They have really been giving her the business tonight from the service line. And she's been able to handle it sometimes, and then other times like this, just not able to handle the pressure. Well, Washington now 12-3 in, in points off of serve. Seven aces, Minnesota with five errors. And so just a tough outing from the service line for the Gophers. And that's exactly it, Sam. That's the difference in the match. I mean, the first set was very close. This one, obviously, clear Washington Huskies. You are pumped about that run that you just went on. Now, you, the big thing that you want to do is you want to nail a pass, get back into the serving position. Well, Carl back serving. Shaftmaster front row. Hansen still a threat from the back row. And Lego back row. And behind to Imani Bush. And speaking of player of the game, she's a contender yeah, too. True, true, true. You know, between Bush and Hunt, they're making it tough on us to, to make that call. Uh, but I like this set choice for Bush out of the back row. We haven't seen that yet this match. And obviously Minnesota's defense not prepared for it. And another ace for the Huskies, tied up at 19 after the Gophers led 18 to 11, almost entirely because of that service pressure. Absolutely, and Minnesota now gonna pull McKenna Wooker out of the passing rotation. They're gonna rely on Hanson, Thebolt, and Palabiak. Just try to get Wooker a little bit of space and allow her to take a couple rips at the ball. Serving to extend that 8-1 scoring run, and Gophers barely able to get it over. They'll go back and turned away. No, looks like Wooker got hands. 
Wooker got the net. Yeah, it's, it looks like it was either swallowed inside of her or she got the net or something, but Washington just getting down to work and getting down to business. Well, another 3-0 run. And again, barely able to get it back over where the Gophers setting the middle and it falls between Wooker and the block. Two point lead for the Huskies. And, and this is similar to the last set. Minnesota just, their serve and pass game failing them late in a set. Well, Minnesota fighting off a late push from Washington. 19-21 they trail, they were up 18 to 11. And we'll be back after this with more Big Ten Volleyball on Big Ten Plus. Glad that they're catching a couple breaks here. Still trailing two. Excuse me, still, it was tied up. Now they're trailing by one after that service error and just sort of shooting herself in the foot at that point. Absolutely, and now Bush is back in the front row for Washington, so I'd expect her, them to push her quite a bit in offense, but Fletcher's still up there as well. Gophers go to Grote. Off of base, and Bush, as you said, tries to finesse it. Instead, Shaftmaster going back to Grote and can't find space. Bush, another chance, and a great dig by Palabia. Grote again, and off the hands gets the kill. I can't, I can't quite understand how Zaynep Palabia dug that ball. It was such a quick ball out to Bush, and she was able to slice it cross court, but. Polabiak just absolutely in the right position to dig that ball, earning Minnesota that point. Well, such a modest person. She'll credit all of that to her blockers and the rest of her team, but she has really shown amazing development mm -hmm. and one of the best liberos in the conference. Going straight to Bush again. Hansen handles it awkwardly, but they're able to recover. And Shaftmatch will just bump it over. Up the middle. And Gophers caught out of position. That's Katie Wessels. And Katie Wessels has, you know, been an option in these really tight points here. It looks like Minnesota's going to challenge whether this ball was up or not. Lydia Grote pancaked it, and she was convinced that she got it up. So well, another challenge here. We're, lots of challenges going on, Sam. Well, another chance. You know, earlier Washington had the challenge that sort of gave them a timeout. And the Gophers did come out strong with that serve from Acevedo. But now on the other side, they'll get a little bit of a chance to, to reset and, and discuss before going into a potential, uh, you know, nearly set point. That was that crazy dig by Palabiak that I just couldn't even understand how she dug on the prior point. Great dig. And Lydia Groh got a lot of great looks in that point. She's a player that the Gophers have been very pleased with this season and last season as she really developed from a moral leader, which she was on day one, bringing the energy into really being an on-court leader. But, you know, don't get her wrong. She still loves being a moral leader, but <laughs> really being a trusted on-court presence. For sure. And here there we, we see that last play. Oh, hard to see. And we're getting a good look at a couple of transfers, though. Lydia Grote has been a great transfer into this program. Alex Acevedo. There's tons of um, really great pickups for this Minnesota squad. And Keegan Cook really feels strongly about the players they've brought into this program. Well, no true freshmen playing this year for the Gophers. Of course, they've got several red shirts who are looking to get some serious playing time next mm -hmm. year with, with some of the departures. As we're still awaiting that call. Looks like the ref is just making his decision. And unsuccessful challenge. And so the Gophers still have their work cut out for them. Call stands. Now important here that Washington puts the pressure on and keeps the pressure on from the service line with Bays headed back. Well, Bays serving. Yeah. 
Gopher fans still trying to get loud and, well, it almost looked out, but just falling into that very back corner, Huskies get another set point. And Minnesota needs to be talking about that. First of all, you, you gotta be playing a ball close here at this point in the set, but they need to be calling in, 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 in. Well, Huskies serving set point, picked up cleanly by Hanson. They'll go back to her. It's off hands. Opposite. And that one's sent long. Now we got another close one here, Sam. It's a, it's a, I like the aggressiveness out of Washington. You know that they're going to continue to rip away at this ball. They've got to get a good pass. Minnesota, on the other hand, wants to put a good solid serve over. From Palaviak. They'll go straight to Bush. And just a single block, Palaviak is able to handle it. Overpass. And again, no time wasted, as that'll do it for set two. Washington, just a fabulous job in these first two sets. And you can see that they're playing with a lot of fun and a lot of excitement and a lot of joy, but they're also just absolutely sticking to their game plan, playing really strong defense, serving very strongly. And that has allowed them to go ahead two sets to none. Well, Julie, just the service errors, when, when, when you add them together again, like, like we've been doing, 16 to four points off the serve. And again, that doesn't tell the full story with service pressure, but it's a hard thing to come back from that. Absolutely, and set one was only decided by four points, set two by two. I mean, that's that's it right there. That's the difference, right? So Minnesota, they've got to be able to shake that off now and come back at it. Washington's just looking to do more of the same. Keep it going. We mentioned that first career uh, ranked win for Leslie Gabriel that came against Oregon and a huge win for that program. Minnesota, they did reverse sweep OSU a little bit ago and so hoping they can pull off the same thing here. Absolutely, both teams playing for you know a ton here but Minnesota hoping for the reverse sweep as you said Sam and Washington you know we, when we talked to coach Gabriel she talked about she just wants to see them continuing to make progress and continuing to improve and continuing to get better and you know what a way to do that than to get your second rank win in just a couple of weeks. Well Shaft Master will start off serving set three and right off the bat, just where he left off, Kuhn Fletcher picks up the kill. And Kuhn Fletcher there, we, we've mentioned her name quite a bit. They love going to her, only her fourth kill of the night, but important that Washington continues to push her, continues to push the ball to that right side. We're just hitting point zero seven one, but she's contributed a lot. As that serve picked up and Shaft Master will go back to Hansen and she'll get hands. And Julia Hansen has been so important for Minnesota. She's been, you know, she was hot early on. We didn't call her name a lot in the second set. Minnesota needs to get her worked back into these, this offense. The serve from Hansen, not handled smoothly. We'll go straight to Bush. And Plaviak almost got that one up, but Wilker couldn't get around to it. Plavia just not quite having a, a great night. She, here, this ball is a, it's a good swing for sure, but it's right inside that block. You expect your libero to kind of be sitting right inside that block, ready to dig that ball, and just not quite able to handle it. It's heard back to serve. Huskies lead set three, two to one. Won the first two. Groat, and that's sent wide. Minnesota's just looking a bit messy. I mean, they don't look like they're in it. They look a little bit discombobulated. They, they don't look like they're synced up and trying to get after it in this set. They've got to do so. Shaftmaster saves that one, Aulea, but it's picked up. Bush on the other side. And that'll be kept in play. Lydia Grote, and she finds space. <laughs> And of course, Palaviak immediately goes for the hug and Lydia Grote looks a little bit surprised. That is such a hard ball to swing at. I mean, look at where this ball is coming from. It's coming from the end line. Lydia Grote still aggressive. Love that aggression. Well, Palaviak said that Grote as, as a moral leader was, uh, quote, almost as energetic as me. I think it's hard to match <laughs> the enthusias, enthusiasm from Palaviak.
Kolabiak just, again, just seeming a little out of sorts. Important here, when, when she's such an emotional leader, important here that the team rallies around her. Washington here gonna try and go on a bit of a run with Amani Bush in the back row. Serve from Bush, trickling off the net. And straight to Angerman, she gets another kill. And that starts with a beautiful pass. That is what Minnesota needs. They've got to be able to control the ball. They've got to be able to pass better on first ball so that they can use any of their options. Callie Angerman, great. Well, she had nine kills as a Yellow Jacket before transferring. She's got more than double that this year for the Gophers. Serve from Grote. And Grote gets a much needed service ace, tying this one back at four. And Lydia Grote with another service ace. And now you can start to feel the momentum building a little bit for Minnesota. We'll see if they can capitalize on it and go on a bit of a run. Another hard serve from Grote. Almost gets the overpass. Angerman's there. Shaftmaster looking around, but still Gets it, still looking a little confused, and the block from Wooker. Wow, what a good block by McKenna Wooker. She's gotten used a couple of times earlier in this match, but on this one, she is absolutely in the right position, her hands penetrating over the net. Fantastic block. Grote serving with a one-point lead. She's put pressure in this service run, and Bush. And Wooker just gets that left hand on it, but it's not enough. Everyone sort of reaching for the ball. Bush almost missing it, but able to get to it. Great leap by her. And Wooker and Plahaviak just, just out of reach. Julia Hunt back at the line for Washington. Tied up at five. And Wooker can't handle it. Another ace. And who else but Julia Hunt? Wow, what an impressive serving from performance from the freshman. Well, that's her sixth of the night. Huh. Sixth of 11 team aces, more than half. Another tough serve, but it's picked up. They go to Wooker. She'll tip yeah. it in. Net here, net call on, uh, I think on Wilson, not sure, but called right away. Just a bit much there. That happens. You're always going to have a bit of a blocking error here or there. You're trying to be aggressive. Well, Acevedo, one of the Gophers' best servers in. Knotted up at six. And Angaman, another kill. She's having herself a day. Angaman, we mentioned she's very good off of one foot. And there she's able to take advantage of a very poorly formed block by Ensley. Ensley was up a little early and then as she's coming down, she's not penetrating over the net. And an ace from Acevedo. 8-6 Gophers. Good serving stretch. Alex Acevedo doing exactly what this Gopher squad is asking her to do, filling her role, beautifully putting the pressure on from the service line. Well, we'll be back 8-6. More volleyball on Big Ten Plus. Well, we're back. Minnesota surged forward 8-6, 3-0 scoring run. Alex Acevedo had that last ace. Here we're getting a look here at the hit of the game. Julie Hansen ripping it over that block in set one. And that's what Minnesota wants to see more of in this set. It's a great swing. It's a beautiful hit. Love it as the hit of the game. Now they need to see more of that in this third set if they want to extend this match. Well, Hansen, nine kills, three errors on 22 looks. Hitting 273, just one point above her season average, and six digs on top of it. And getting a look here at this Gopher squad, you can see a little bit of life coming back into them. I said earlier in this third set, they just looked discombobulated. They didn't look like they kind of had it together. Now they're starting to get it. They're starting to work their way back in. And that's a sign of a mature team and a team that has good culture. 
Well, much of their struggles this game have come from the service line. We'll see if Acevedo is able to turn that around and, and go on more of a run here. 3-0 run so far, 8-6. Again, putting pressure from the serve. Ensley, Kolobiak finds it. They'll go straight out to Hansen, and a block from Wessels. Really good block by Wessels. She, you know, that is all about middles, closing the block, putting that left hand out there. Really, Wessels' impressive job pushing back into the court and getting that block. It'll get Molly Wilson back to the line, just a one-point deficit. And out of system for the Gophers, they'll go Hanson. She'll try and tip it in, but the hand again of Wessels. And Palaviak will just have to send that one high over. Up the middle, Engerman able to deal with it. Hanson will get another shot, she'll tip it in. They'll go back to Fletcher, blocked by Julia Hansen. Julia Hansen earning that point. Really good job on this block. You can see she's right in position. She's absolutely expecting it. Looks like it may have hurt her a little bit in terms of how hard the swing is from Fletcher. But Julia Hansen, exactly what you need from her at this point of the match. They'll send Crow back to the line. Gophers leading still 8-6 in blocks. Again to that outside, challenging Wooker. Aule gets a hand on it. It'll be Hansen now, as Wooker slow to get back into the play. Ensley misses that roll. Gophers up 10-7. A little bit of miscommunication, some bodies running into each other over on the Washington side of things. On the Minnesota side, Lauren Crowell comes in as a serving specialist. You want to see her put a little bit more pressure on. Some of these serves that she's giving Washington are just a bit too easy. That's a better one. And there it is, Phoebe Aulea says no. Holy smokes, that is a crazy block by Phoebe Aulea. I mean, Washington felt like, you know, obviously an out of system ball here, but woo, Phoebe Aulea. Not tonight, she says. Well, 9-6 in blocks for Minnesota. Four point lead after dropping the first two sets. And a good pressure on that serve from Lauren Crowell. Gophers reset, and Shaftmaster goes over, finds the space on the court. So smart, it's such a smart play. All of us are waiting for that free ball and her to dish any one of her options. She's got both Julia Hansen and Phoebe Aulea up there. Takes it herself, nobody ready. Crowell serve that picked up just by that baseline. And Bush rolls it over off the net. Scrappy play by the Gophers. And Feebolt sprawling, sprawling back. And to cap it off, there it is from Julia Hansen. Minnesota's playing more like they need to be now. This is Minnesota Volleyball as they expect themselves to play. They're fired up. Julia Hansen especially is fired up and ready to go here. O'Crowell will serve again. And they'll go straight back. Tolino getting her first look and her first kill. And Tolino, she's been playing here and there for these Washington Huskies, and she has been a really good factor for them. She's got, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of experience here and there, 10 sets played, but a great sub there for her to give them a little bit of life. And pardon me, that's actually her fourth attempt with her first kill of the night as Hansen sent just long but gets the touch. Julia Hansen, I talked about this at the beginning of the set. Minnesota needs to get her going, and here she goes. Gophers up to a six point lead, but definitely can't take their foot off the gas after what happened in set two. Shaftmaster. Puts pressure on the serve, but it's handled quite well. Straight up the middle and out for Wessels. Washington continued to try and call for touches here. Leslie Gabriel not going to use her challenge at this point in the match. Minnesota up 15-8. Six to one scoring run for the Gophers. And another missed serve. 
I, you know, the Gopher fans around here get really disappointed with the missed serves, and for sure you do with the number of missed serves that Minnesota's had in this match, but, you know, that's not a bad miss there. I mean, you want to see it miss long, but still, they're up 15-8 at that point, now 15-9. Just important that they come back. Wooker handles that. They'll go to Hansen. And a good touch by Bush. It'll go back to Grote. Off hands and gets the finish. Lydia Grote. What I like most about Lydia Grote when she's paying left side is her disciplined defense. You can see there she stays home to pick up that tip, then transitions out to hit. And that's not always easy to do when you're not playing that position frequently. Seven point lead for the Gophers. Hansen serving and gets the ace. And again, Gophers on a good run, can't take the foot off the gas. Julia Hansen coming up clutch here in set three, and that is exactly what Minnesota needs from her. When you're having a breakout season like this, it's not only important that you're productive, but it's important that you're productive when your team needs you most. That is what really seals it as a breakout season for Julia Hansen. She's absolutely showing up like the leader that Minnesota needs her to be right now. Well, we've talked about the depth on both sides the Gophers have a lot of different options. Grote has had a great year. Wooker in serve receive. They'll target Hansen. Wooker brings it back and Grote takes a decently hard swing for that set. It'll be Ensley and Lydia Grote. <laughs> Lydia Grote just showing zero out there. To your point, she took a pretty aggressive swing on that ball, and then she comes back with a great block against Ensley. Ensley's going to have to swing higher hands if she's going to be effective here. Grote serving with a nine-point lead. Putting on pressure, Ensley rolls it over. Palavik's there, and Wooker had to sprawl a little bit laterally, but gets it. And not able to return it are the Huskies. 10-point lead for the Gophers. Sam, as a former middle, I just have to call out this beautiful dig by Callie Engeman to get this thing done for Minnesota. Obviously, Wooker does her job taking care of it. But, you know, we middles don't get a lot of digs. So Engeman with a great one. Well, it's their largest lead in a set tonight. And a good serve puts pressure. Gophers will have a chance. Wooker. And just a little bit tangled up with Palavia, couldn't pick up that block. Not quite, not quite able to get it done. And, you know, important here that Minnesota kind of comes back right away. This is not a super strong rotation for Washington, especially with Hunt headed in the back row and, and Bush also back row. So it'll be interesting to see if they, how much pressure they can put on and then where they go. Hansen handles the serve. They go back to Wooker. She'll roll it over. And Bush, back row, picked up by Thebolt. Hansen flying in from the back, but again, good defense by both sides from the back row attacks. Ensley tries to end it and does. I mentioned this just a couple of swings ago. I said Ensley's going to have to swing higher hands if she wants to score against this gopher block. She does just that. That is the way for Ensley to score right now. She just doesn't have a lot of other options. Well, Hunt, six aces tonight and went on a quite a bit of a run in her last serving appearance. Thiebault will set Wooker. And Ensley will tip it over. Shaftmaster to Wooker, left hand tip. Back row, Bush again, but it's picked up. Off the hand of Wooker, then Palabiak. Angaman gets a swing. She's slow to get back up. They'll go far side to Ensley. And Melanie Shaftmaster single-handed blocks it. Melanie Shaftmaster with the solo block after her team was all over the place. Scrappy as heck. Check that out. Look at that solo block. Woo! Well, Acevedo, definitely the player you want serving if you're the Gophers right now. 22-13. Looking good, but still have to get those last three points and push this to a fourth. Ensley will just roll that one cross court from outside the antenna and Shaftmaster almost gets the kill. Ensley will pop that one right back over. Shaftmaster again 
and gets the overpass. One more time. No, she'll go to Hanson instead. Hanson wants a touch, but doesn't get it. We'll see if she looks to Keegan Cook for a challenge, and it looks like he won't take yeah, that. Yeah, he looks like he's chatting with him because he lost one challenge already, right? So we talked about this. When a coach uses a challenge and the call is not overturned, they don't get to keep that challenge. So they have one left. And so Keegan Cook, knowing that he wants this match to extend, does not want to use it at this point, especially with a lead of eight points. Julia Hansen, very upset about it, but she'll get back into it. Well, it's Molly Wilson serving eight point deficit. Gophers three away from taking set three. Shaftmaster runs the slide. Angaman, have yourself a night. That's her fourth on five attempts. How about Callie Angaman coming in off the bench? She doesn't play a ton, but when she has, she's been very effective in Minnesota needing that tonight. And on top of those kills, she's also got six blocks on the night. Crowell gets the overpass and Shaftmaster off that back foot sends the Gophers 10 point lead set point. Shaftmaster, how many attempts is that for her now? It looks like uh, eight attempts for her. She got four kills on eight attempts. Not a bad stat line for the setter. Crowell again, low serve. And Fletcher sends that one just wide. Gophers take set three back it and unlike last set able to keep that pressure through the whole set that's right and you wonder just is Washington getting a little tired or are they not able to carry their momentum through Minnesota doing a better job I mean they passed better they still had a lot of you know out of system balls that they were swinging at so it'll be interesting to see if any of the team any adjustments happen here in this fourth set well after three Gophers ending that set on a 3-0 scoring run Again, hitting 255, well over their season average. And we'll be back with set four on Big Ten. But not having a great night tonight, and they've kind of subbed in for her here and there. It'll be interesting to see if they bring her back in this fourth set or go with someone else. On the Gophers side, Angman, of course, having a great night. Mm -hmm. We've said her name a lot. And just some players overall in the game that you know maybe we weren't expecting to play as prominent of a role that have really picked it up. And a pretty balanced offense out of Minnesota while we're on the subject. Julia Hansen with 10 kills, but Lydia Grote and McKenna Wooker with eight each, and Melanie Schaffmaster with four, as well as Kelly Angaman with four. Well, starting off the set with some good defense, but Bush powers that one through. And that is what Washington needs to see. They need Bush to get hot early. They're going to want to go to her a lot. Then they're going to widen it out and go to Fletcher. they got to get back on their game plan here. Lauren Bays. Senior libero serving. Wooker sprawling out front. Shaftmaster set goes to Grote. They'll go to Bush again. Just to the side of Hansen and Awalea. And Grote gets another chance off the block. And the Gophers can't pick that one up. Minnesota's coverage has not been great tonight. There have been a few balls that you think they should be covering and they should be picking up. Credit to Washington's block for sure here. You can see a beautiful closed block, but they got Minnesota's got to pick that ball up. Well, joint effort from Hunt and Fletcher as Bays back at the service line. Hansen takes a swing and a good save that play from Bays. Bush tips it. And they'll go to the middle, Hunt. Grote now with the turn of her own. And tips it over, it's picked up. Bush will just have to set that one over. Shaftmaster setting Grote again. And again, great defense from this Husky team. Bush sends it over, Grote gets hands on it. And it'll be Hansen who gets the kill off the block. <laughs> Wow, I mean, just a great point. When you love volleyball, you love seeing the defense that we've been seeing here. And you mentioned it mid-rally, Sam. Washington's defense just incredibly stellar. Minnesota, too. And there, Julia Hansen just able to take advantage of a bush block that's not quite there. Well, Hansen serve picked up cleanly. Hunt is turned away. And that is an important block because Hunt has really 
quite a day. She had gone four for six thus far in the match, hitting 667. No errors. That's her first error of the night. Important that Minnesota finally gets on top of that. Hunt, on the other hand, has got to keep swinging away. And Hansen again losing that momentum. But Gophers have been able to put service pressure throughout the game at points. Early in the set here, too. So we'll look to see if they bounce back. Hurd, on the other hand, has done a nice job of coming in and putting up on pressure right away. Well, there she does it again. Palabiak will have to set Grote. And Grote goes off hands. And such a good option when, when Palabiak has to bump set. She can bump set behind her. She can bump set in front of her. And you love having that really strong right side hitter. So you've got that optionality when, when your libero is taking the second ball. Well, Grote, of course, familiar with the Washington program, both from her sister and from playing three years mm -hmm. in the Pac-12. Now it'll be Bush taking a swing. And Wooker maybe thought that one was going out left it for Palabiak but can't quite get a handle on that one. 4-3 Huskies. Yeah, you said it, Sam. Worker's got to be there playing defense, but I think it's a really good swing by Bush. Look how far off the net she is, but that's a really tough angle. It's a great swing there by Imani Bush. Well, she's back at the line. Leads the game with 14 kills as Engman tries to go over. Lee Ensley tooling the block. Extends the lead to two for Washington. And we talked about Inslee not having the night she wants to have. So really good that she gets in there and continues to rip away. That high hand shot is what's working for her. The Pav trying to bring the energy, throw Bush off her service game. And a good hard low serve. It'll be Wooker now with a chance. Wilson in the net there, and she's saying, my fault, my fault, my fault, because, wow, you said it. That was a really good serve by Imani Bush. <laughs> Grote back at the line. Ensley tips it over. A little bit slow to get there, but Grote got it. Shaftmaster will go to Wooker. And Wooker gets the finish. Such a good swing there by McKenna Wooker. She's able to you know, get up, and then she uses her very fast arm off the block here. You'll get a good look at this in the replay. Just a very quick swing, high hands. It's, I like that swing a lot. Knotted up at five here early in set four. Gophers convincingly won the third set, 25-14, as that surf and groat falls short. And Washington here, Julia Hunt going back to the service line. We've we've talked about Julia Hunt's prowess from the service line. Six aces tonight. Well, it's 22 to seven in points off the serve. Hmm. Wooker, roll it over. They'll go to Ensley and splits the block. It's a good swing by Ensley, and it's a poorly formed block by Minnesota. And Ensley notices that and is able to take it in the seam here. Uh, you can see Shaftmaster's floating out, Engeman not quite there, and just not the block Minnesota needs. Hunt still serving for Washington. Wooker, and she puts that one down fast. No stopping that rocket. And it starts with a really good pass by Palavia. So that's much better ball control. Shaftmaster's got all of her options. And Wooker, this beautiful fast arm swing. That'll bring the Gophers back within one after Hunt had a small service run of her own. They'll go straight to Ensley. And just over the top of that Angerman Shaftmaster block. Absolutely, and Ensley starting to work her way in now. This is what Washington wants to see from her. They want to see her work her way back in. She's, you know, kind of been kind of quiet on the offensive side of things. Now she's back to zero in terms of hitting. She's got six kills on the night. Well, she had three through the first three sets. Mm -hmm. so that service error, again, Gophers not going away in this fourth set. Yeah, and, and you said it, Sam. Ensley had three kills through the first three sets. She's averaging 2.91 kills per set. So 
having three and three is not what they want to see. Now she's got three already in this fourth set. Fletcher will get that first swing and a little bit of an awkward block, slow to fall, but it'll get the Gophers a free ball. Chaffmaster goes to Hansen and it's off the antenna. Hansen says, my bad, my bad, my bad. She just let that one go a little too far as she swung at it. Ensley now in the back row. Washington in the rotation that has Bush and Fletcher in the front row. And Awalea. Well, if it didn't hit the court before, <laughs> still gets the kill. My goodness, that was a really nice run. Awalea does not go off of one foot all that often. And so here she goes off of two feet. You know, what's interesting that set that up was actually Shaftmaster. Because she's been so offensive, Bush ended up jumping with her instead of waiting for Awalea. Serve from Shaftmaster. They'll go straight to Bush. And Palavia handles it to Hansen. And there it is, another for Julia Hansen. There she goes high. I mean, Julia Hansen, when you can get her a ball like that, and she, you can just throw it up there, let her float after it. It's a thing of beauty. Well, that is her 12th of the night. Leads all Gophers. Bush with 14 leads the game. They'll go straight to Fletcher and another Gopher block. Julia Hansen just turning up. She had a great third set, and now here she is being a difference maker in the fourth. Well, you talked about it back at the beginning of the third. She's the one the Gophers need to get going, and she has. Shaftmaster back at the line. They'll go to Bush again and finds the space between Awalea and Grote. Bush able to sneak that one in on the other side of the net. And a great swing by her. I, I love how Bush continues attacking in a various method. She's going hard, she's going high hand, she's tipping off speed. I love the variety with which she's attacking the ball. Knotted up at 10. Four set, Gophers looking to, pitch, to push it to a fifth, get another reverse sweep on the year. They'll go Grote. And that one almost to that upper deck of the Performance Center. Absolutely, Lydia Grote, I mean, my goodness. Take a look at this play. It's a really good job by Phoebe Awalea to hold the blocker and hunt so that Grote has a nice big seam to hit through. Well, she had a team leading 13 kills back against Michigan. She's got 10 on the night. They'll go up the middle to hunt. And Palavia will set Grote. There it is again, her 11th of the night. I mean, when you've got Grote and Hansen firing as they are, it's hard to beat Minnesota. I mean, they really are, are, are such a dynamic duo. And with Minnesota's defense keeping them in it, you know, you're, you're, you've got to love what you're seeing right now as a Minnesota fan. Hansen serve trickles off the net. They'll go to Bush. And just a single block there, and Bush is able to use it to her advantage. And you've got to love what you're seeing out of Imani Bush if you're a Washington Husky fan. I just I, I, I just can't get over how much I love the different. Like, that is such a good, sharp angle to be hitting with that thumb down. Well, Gophers 12-11 lead. Klavia gets the serve. McKenna Wooker. And a bit of a sprawling set to Bush. Hands, but a great dig. That was heard. Bush will get another chance and gets the touch. Imani Bush coming back after it here in the fourth set. She's now leading all players with 17 kills on the night. 17 kills on 48 swings. She's hitting 250. Well, there were a couple contenders earlier, right now, probably between Hansen and Bush for player of the game, both having outstanding performances. That's right. And Imani Bush, after the first three sets, had 12 kills. She's got 17 now, so five already in this fourth set. We're only halfway through. Heard with that long serve. Grote will tip it over. And a good play by Hunt to keep the play going. Bush, another tip, and turn back from Grote. Bush, one more time, and it'll find its way over the block. Gophers go to Grote. 
and she gets the hand. Lydia Grote, too hot to handle. And Lydia Grote, I mentioned this, when Palaviak's bump setting, she's got a, not, a, a couple of choices here, but of course she's got to go to the hot hand in Lydia Grote. Very deep cross-court shot. Palaviak serving with a one-point lead. Almost at the halfway point in this fourth set as Bush goes off the block. And there it is, Angerman. Again, that's her seventh of the night, just one shy of Aulea. And really important for Minnesota to kind of stop Bush. She's been really sort of on fire here. And so important for Minnesota to get a stop. We're gonna take a look here at Washington. Washington is now putting Howery in, the first year freshman setter. Well, Plaviak serving. Howery her first chance and She'll get the point off Grote, reaching too far over. Yeah, that's hard as a blocker. You get really excited, and that ball's right in front of you, but you can't impact a ball like that. So uh, Washington will take this point. They're only down one. Well, Howry, ninth-ranked player in the country, or 17th, depending on which website you look at, number four setter on both sites, getting a chance to go early as an ace falls. Washington tied this thing back up. This is another one that Bush is just very low to the net. And it's not just that it's so low to the tape, but it's got such pace on it. It makes it very hard to handle. Tied up at 14, Bush. Low serve, Hansen falls back to handle it. And Lydia Grote will send that just long. That'll send us to 15-14 Washington and our media timeout. We'll be back with the rest of set four shortly on Big Ten Plus. We'll put the Gophers up 16-15. Lydia Grote, good low serve, almost gets the overpass, but that opens up the floor, and Grote not quite able to reach around for that. And so the Huskies tied up at 16. Yeah, you saw both middle, uh, both Minnesota's middle and left side jump with the setter, and that left uh, Shaftmaster one on one. Now she did get her own solo block earlier in this match, but this time Ensley takes a sharp cross court. Julia Hunt, maybe not the player you want to see at the service line if you're in Minnesota right now. Six aces on the night, but Hanson handles it. They'll go out to Wooker, and it's picked up all the way across to Ensley. She'll just tip it back over the middle of the court. Wooker, another chance. She'll tip it, and a good dig by Hunt. Another tip from Bush. Wooker setting Shaftmaster takes a swing. <laughs> Could see the smile on her face from that one. Ensley gets the kill as Palabia. Thankfully, she's okay, but dove into the scorer's table there. Just, I love the hustle on both sides of the net. Both teams just absolutely getting after it. Um, high level defense playing, being played here. Well, she looks to be okay. Hunt continues to serve. As you can hear, the path getting into it, trying to support the Gophers. They trail 17-16, the serve from Hunt. Off the net, picked up. They'll go to Engerman, running the slide. And how about that defense from the Huskies getting it back over? Gophers with another chance, running it again. And there you go. Try it once, try it again, and it works. Callie Ingerman with authority. I love that. She had such a nice swing, and Washington's defense was so strong, but then she just comes back and hammers that second set. Well, for Ingerman, that's five on the night, five of eight attempts and no errors. They'll go to Ensley again, she'll tip it over. Feebolt's there. 
Far side to Hansen. Again, great defense by the Huskies. Ensley splits the gap and gets the kill. Puts the Huskies up too. Ensley able to take advantage of a seam there in Minnesota's block. You could see McKenna Wooker, or excuse me, uh, Melanie Shaftmaster was pushed out right on this ball and Ingeman not able to close that block. And it's 18-17 for the Huskies. Molly Wilson back in setting on the serve. Engman finds the block and, and that'll go to Washington. Washington fired up about that and Engman, it, it's a good run. She's been hot on that slide, but Washington fired up. Ensley really doing an, a fabulous job of doing what she needs to do here in this fourth set for the Washington Huskies. Well, Minnesota will take a timeout. We'll look ahead for these two teams. Of course, Washington coming off of a very grueling weekend with Oregon and then USC. They took the Oregon game, a great win. And then with the loss of Kirsten Barton had trouble against US USC. Minnesota, they you know, were on a four game win streak, seven and one since that USC loss. And what stands out in their schedule ahead? You know, the, the thing about the Big Ten is that there's just never a night off. And so they'll face number 12 Oregon here on Saturday. And then they got to turn right back around and go to Nebraska. They'll get Michigan again here at home. Again, they swept them just last weekend. And then at number seven, Wisconsin, a border battle. Like, it's just a very grueling schedule, but one that really trains you and, and, and gets you in um, absolutely the right mindset as they look to enter the postseason. Well, all of those games on either Big Ten Network or Big Ten Plus. On the other side, for the Huskies, they'll go to number two or they'll host number two Nebraska. That'll definitely be a tough matchup. You got to figure if they take either today or tomorrow or excuse me Saturday against Nebraska I have a hard time believing they won't be ranked out of that. Yeah or at least receiving votes right I mean this Nebraska match that they're hosting at home they're expecting it to, to perhaps be a, a record breaking attendance match then they go to UCLA they've got a nice one uh, against Northwestern back at home and then hit the road all the way across country versus Ohio State Penn State. Well Washington right now is eighth in the conference all seven teams ahead of them are ranked. Mm -hmm. They did receive some votes in the yep. latest poll. And we'll see how that continues if they can get one tonight. In the meantime, an ace right off the bat, still Molly Wilson. And Wilson comes back in. We talked about she she uh, went out of the match for just a little while and now comes back in with really a strong pressure from the service line. That's exactly what you want to see out of Molly Wilson. Huskies five points out from pulling from pulling out the ranked upset. Set a bit, bit too far for Hansen, but she handles it. Ensley will take a swing and send that long. Ensley just out of position there, and I, you know you love being aggressive, but when she's kind of in the middle of the court, kind of can't figure out where to where to put that ball. Now Minnesota needs to capitalize here. They're down two, and they they want to extend this match. Well, they'll look to Crowell to do so. Serve picked up. They'll go to Ensley on that right side. She'll take another swing. Wilker's able to get over to it, and Julia Hansen will just have to bump it over. Ensley still on the right side, gets another go. Off the block, Fletcher picks it up. Fletcher, another shot. And Wilker gets it. Hansen, and wow, that was just too powerful to stop. Absolutely. Julia Hansen coming up big when Minnesota needs her to come up big. Washington, you're not going to take a chance, and they're going to take a timeout. Coach Leslie Gabriel wants to talk to her team. It's a great swing by Julia Hansen. It's just so hard to defend. Well, as we saw that earlier stat, lots of back and forth here in this fourth set. What do you think is the key if you're Minnesota to finishing strong? If you're Minnesota, you have to make sure that you have ball control. That is all they need to do. They've got the offensive weapons. They've got the pressure they need. They've got great defense. They have to be able to handle Washington's serves. What Minnesota's serving now, so they also want to be able to put the pressure on from the service line and put Washington out of position. Well, on the other side with Washington, they've looked to several players throughout the game to bring some energy. Bush 
leads the game with 17 kills. Ensley started to pick, has started to pick it up lately, nine kills, and of course Hunt has had a great day from the service line. Who do you think you can count on with this first ball? I think you absolutely, um, I, I think you're gonna go to Bush. I think he, she's just too consistent right now. She's leading the team, and so Minnesota's obviously gonna be keying in on Bush, but I think she's got the ability to mix it up and switch up her shot, so I would expect Washington to go to her. Well, Hanson, you see 13 kills, leads the Gophers, though there are two with 12, Wooker and Grote. It's Lauren Crowell who's serving. And recall, Bush is uh, back row for Washington right now, Ensley's front row, so it's got to be a, a good enough pass that they can get a nice rhythm ball to the back row. Otherwise, you know, perhaps they go to Fletcher here on the outside. Well, it's Hensley, Ensley, excuse me, Bays and Bush in the back row on serve receive. They'll go straight to Ensley, and it's off the block and out. And Ensley gets it done. That's really important for her, um, both for her, the team's productivity, but also for her confidence to take that big rip on the right side, use Julia Hansen's hands. Now she'll head back to the service line. Huskies serving with a two-point lead. Leading in sets, two to one, Ensley. Serve picked up by Thebalt in front of Wooker. Hansen out wide. And she's turned away. And Fletcher coming in there. Kuhn Fletcher absolutely putting up a very important block for this Washington Huskies team. Well, Fletcher entering the day had 44 blocks on the year. She's got five today. Ensley still serving off the net. Thiebault gets it. They'll go to Hanson again. And the finesse slips it just over. A couple of Huskies got a hand on it, but none could turn it around. We thought they'd pick it up, but Julia Hansen able to just sneak that one in there for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. We'll send Shaftmaster to the line. Down 22-20. Shaftmaster, 21 aces on the year with one tonight. And again, from a couple players falling there, they'll have to wipe off the court. Washington in a three-hitter rotation now, so they've, they've got Bush up there along with Wessels and Fletcher. Shaftmaster serves Bays. They'll go straight to Bush. And good hands by Wooker. Hanson with a chance. She'll try and drop it in, but Bush is there. They'll go straight to Bush. And Gophers with the chance. Lydia Grode, it's a little bit behind her, but she puts a good swing on it. Bush, another shot here. Double block goes over, and Shaftmaster just gets her on the shoulder. And Bush coming up big, just as we expect. They're using her a lot here now that she's front row, and she's swinging very hard. Well, that puts Washington one point out from match point. Gophers will have to get past the serve of Lauren Bays. Blaviak takes it at the last second. It's Lydia Grote. Good swing, but Bays is there to Bush. Over the top, it's picked up. Blaviak setting Hansen on the opposite, and there it is. 23-21, the Gophers are not going away. Absolutely, and that's what you want to see out of this Gopher squad. You want to see them continuing to fight, and continuing to push. Washington continues to go to Bush. This time, Minnesota able to defend her. Well, three before that point was the largest lead this set. For Washington, Hansen struggled serving earlier, but did have an ace. Bush puts it down fast, but Palabiak is there. Wooker setting the far side to Grote, and she gets it off the block. Lydia Grote. What a swing. What a great second ball by McKenna Wooker. She put up a beautiful ball out to the right side, and Lydia Grote takes advantage. Well, that'll force Washington to take a timeout. Gophers crawling back 23-22. We'll be back with more on Big Ten Plus. Gotten out of one game in four sets this year, and that was a loss. 12-1 in three setters, 4-4 four in four five setters. Yeah, they're certainly looking to extend this. They've got Julia Hansen back at the service line. She's one of their better servers for sure. Washington's got a three-hitter rotation up here with Bush, Hunt, and Fletcher. Well, Washington protecting a one-point lead. Serve from Hansen. 
They'll go straight to Bush as expected off the block. And they'll set Lydia Grote, tips it in and great defense by the Huskies. It's somehow picked up by the Gophers. Grote again off the block and they can't quite return that one. And the Huskies very proud of the defense that they're playing, both on floor defense, but also their blocking absolutely has kept them in this match and has helped them propel to the lead that they've got. Well, there you see match point for the Huskies. Minnesota will take a timeout. Still out hitting an efficiency 250 to 117. Nine more kills, but really the service line has been, you know, a big part of the difficulty tonight. For sure, and you know, I think Minnesota has has done a nice job of spreading out their offense. There's a lot of things that, sh you know, should be leading to them, uh, you know, certainly at least being tighter in this match. Obviously, every set has been close, but hats off to Washington. I mean, we talked about Coach, you know, had, had her first ranked win just, you know, a little over a week ago and now looking for ranked win number two. Minnesota certainly does not want to let that happen. Well, the Gophers, two more points in the game thanks to that huge third set victory but like you said head coach leslie gabriel looking for a second ranked win and it's really been you know julia hunt and especially imani bush filling the shoes of kirsten barton who's gotten them to this point yeah and imani bush i think is the story of the match she's only hitting 207 but she's got 18 kills on the night maddie emsley has got 10 kills wessels with five Fletcher with five and then Hunt with four. So, you know, really it's been a story of these outside hitters, these pin hitters getting it done for Washington. And the milestone Bush did pass 200 kills on the year earlier tonight. She's up to 214 now as it will be Zoria Hurd serving four match points. Booker gets it, Shaftmaster goes back to Grote. Baze gets a hand on it, Bush off the block and who else but Bush. 19 kills on the night to seal this ranked win for the Washington Huskies. Bush is the story of the night for these Washington Huskies. I mean, certainly every person that stepped on the floor played a very important role for them and played their roles very well. But Imani Bush, he got it done. Well, certainly, Probably the most key player in this game, ending the night and started it off hot. She was really, you know, dominant throughout those 19 kills, two blocks, and a second best of the team and second best of the game, 13 digs as well. Absolutely, and I mentioned it a several times throughout the match. I think what made Bush so effective was her ability to really mix it up on offense. She used a lot of different shots. She did. She got a lot of different looks against this Golden Gopher block and. Um, the defense of Washington cannot be underscored enough. That is absolutely what held them in, what propelled them forward, and then Bush able to just dominate offensively. Well, she led the match. Wait a minute, I love it. अरे बाबा
Haiti. American MB School. Delhi. Mm. 